once again, good morning, good afternoon, and I guess for some of you, it's a good evening. Uh, thank you all for joining us uh, today. Uh, my name is Lama Yazbek. I am the deputy CEO at Aflatoon, and I will be your facilitator for today. Uh, so today is a very important day for us as we are launching the strategy for the 2022-2026. Um, our CEO, Wulun Munash, will be presenting the new strategy shortly. If you have any comments or questions, please do share them in the Q&A section below. At the end of the presentation, the team and myself will be answering them. Thank you, thank you again, and Roland, to you. Thank you, Lama. Good morning, uh, good evening, good uh, afternoon. I'm uh, just setting up uh, the space and then I'll be uh, starting. Let me first of all um, welcome you all to this, as Lama said, special event. It's good to see so many friends, Aflatoon partners. Uh, international organizations, donors, foundations, and other people who believe in the empowerment of children and young people. Um, I'd specifically like to, before I start, acknowledge the presence of the Aflatoon Global Network board members and the supervisory board members from China, Malaysia, uh, India, Jordan, Slovakia, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Puerto Rico, and the Netherlands. Their support and their uh, guidance in this process, uh, in facilitating the process, has been extremely uh, important. Before I go into the, the content of the strategy itself, I do want to set a little bit the context uh, as we are today. And that is, first of all, a quick lens on the strategy and the education crisis. Uh, we are developing this uh, strategy. I'm trying to click, but... Yeah. First of all, as many of you know, there is an education uh, crisis as we speak. In, and in, uh, when we talk about an education, education crisis, we're talking about issues with access, issues with quality, and issues with relevance. Uh, as you know, uh, more than a third of children are still today are not completing their basic education. Uh, they will not get a diploma, they will not get a, a job in the private sector or in the, uh, in the government sector. They will have to find a job in the informal sector. But who they have not been prepared. Mental, donc sont obligés de se retrouver dans le secteur informel car ils n'ont pas été suffisamment préparés. Ensuite, euh, yeah. uh, يعانون من أمية في الأمور المالية والاقتصادية وإن كنت محظوظا كفاية It's not really in, in, in sync with the needs of the, of the labor market So when you talk to educators they say yes we are preparing our, uh, our next generation but actually employers and young people themselves are saying we're not being prepared for the, our work life So issues of access, quality and relevance in the education sector as we speak on top of that, many, uh, many boys and girls, uh, young men, young women, are, are being uh, exposed to an, an, a multiple uh, number of vulnerabilities uh, as they grow up, which is important uh, to highlight. It's not about education alone. If you really look at, at the issues there, are, and, and you are familiar with them, it's about issues of poverty, child labor, child marriage, teenage pregnancies, violence against women, HIV AIDS, substance abuse, social emotional challenges, uh, being financially included, there are nutritional issues emerging, financial debts, bullying, gang violence, I can go on and on. It, it, it is really an, a, a challenge as a, as a young person, as a child today to grow up. And as Aflatoon, we are basically saying, uh, because what we are seeing is that the world, the international community is responding very sectoral uh, lens, sectoral driven. So it's a health response to these issues or an education response to this issue, child protection or a social protection. But at Aflatoon, what we are saying is, yes, very important, these sectoral responses, but we really need to empower these children to, uh, to take control of their life, their own life, to successfully transition from childhood to adulthood, but also from school to work life. So give them the skills to take control and make an, uh, 
and, and take control of their lives. On top of all these issues, uh, if, if, if ever in doubt about the need for financial uh, education, we've all seen the COVID crisis over the last two years and people around the world, families uh, were taken by surprise, were not able to respond, were not resilient. We've seen the, the lines in South Africa and India, Brazil and Spain, but all of them. As we speak, of course, also an environmental crisis, climate, energy crisis, not to mention the war we are facing today. At the same time, there are opportunities. We have seen the digital revolution going fast forward as a result of the last few years. Uh, opportunities for education, but also opportunities for financial inclusion also for young people. So in this context, we will have to develop, we had to develop a new strategy. How is Aflatoon responding to this rapidly changing uh, environment and context? And before I go into the, the strategy, I do want to remind, because I've seen there are a few people who are uh, not directly familiar with Aflatoon, to highlight what Aflatoon's principle is on, on why we should respond with social, financial, and entrepreneurship skills. Basically, at Aflatoon, we feel that there is a need that every child and young person should go through a process where they have a sort of uh, deliberations on personal understanding, exploration, who am I, what are my dreams? And then look at their rights and responsibilities. What can I expect from society? But what can the community expect from me as well? So social skills to embed them in their society in a very positive, uh, forward-looking uh, way, uh, trying to make a contribution. But in order to make a contribution, you need to enact on that positive behavior and attitude. You need to have basic financial skills. So we talk about savings, responsible spending, making a plan, making a budget, and ultimately learning by doing. So with your peers, uh, either at a club or in a school setting, set up a social and financial enterprise and learn how to do it. So these have always been core elements of the Aflatoon approach, wherever you are, in China or in Colombia or in Chile or in South Africa, these approaches have been used. So realizing that we need to take stock on where we were, how we were doing and how we should be responding to all these challenges I've just described, we went through a consultative process to develop the new strategy. And we realized that we really need to do a thorough job and it was not an a call here or a call there, but really engage the Aflantou network partners and other key stakeholders. So what we started off is with an, uh, an open-ended qualitative uh, network partner survey where over 100 organizations responded to 18 open-ended questions where they really gave their opinions, uh, shared their anxieties, their recommendations and their priorities for the Aflantou network. Secondly, then based on these findings, we organized focus group discussions uh, with 10 partners, uh, 10 focus group discussions with multiple partners. I think there were over 50 partners involved in that process as well. But we also listened to the children and their parents. So we organized 25 focus group discussions. The Aflatoon partners around the world convened, brought children together, brought parents together and discussed key issues and, and uh, building on uh, on this, we, were, we started to develop the, the process. In addition to the Aflatoon partners, the children and, and the parents. We also engaged uh, key strategic uh, stakeholders we work with, for example, the World Bank, uh, the UN agencies, uh, donors, foundations, uh, and other uh, key international NGOs and other, uh, like the cooperative movement and other organizations, which were very insightful. And again, I'd like to thank everyone who have participated in this, uh, in this process. Now, there is a very detailed uh, report of over 80 uh, pages with uh, all this, uh, the information from these consultations with the different stakeholders. And I won't go through these 80 pages today, but I do want to highlight three typical responses we, uh, we heard uh, from uh, these consultations. And the first one is an, a response from a 12-year-old child in Guatemala. Uh, the child said, I love Aflatoon, but I would like you to teach us more how to take better care of the environment so that in the future the environment will be improved. Uh, and, and, uh, a typical response we heard uh, across the board in many countries in, in different regions where there was a call for some additional uh, content and specifically content in, in the area of green skills climate change, 
but also there was a big other call for digital skills, both for children as well as for teachers. And thirdly, there was a, a, a call for, for involving parents even more systematically than has been done uh, now. About 30% of, of our partners are already working with, on programs with parents, but much more systematically involve them. The second type of response we were getting from uh, the partners from the network. This is a partner uh, from Asia which, uh, who said, we need to put in place a mechanism that will make it possible for children to also have some say in the way materials are being developed. Of course, all our material is ultimately for children and they participate and are at the center of our activities in school and out of school. But there was an, a call across the board that we need to involve children and young people more systematically uh, in the development and the upgrading of our tools. So not only see them as beneficiaries, but really also as, uh, as convener and, and contributor as we develop these constructs. So co-creating with them. Um, in, in addition to that, there was a very strong call that there needs to be more sharing among the partner network, as well as more capacity building among the partner network. And talking about fundraising, uh, communication, uh, capacity building of teachers and trainers and in digital education. So reinvest in, in the partner network was one of the other key points coming out of this. Thirdly, another point which was highlighted by uh, several stakeholders, and this is an example of a UN agency from its headquarters who said, Aflatoon does so much, engage through social media and others much more, keep the organization on top of my mind and up, uh, other people uh, like myself. So uh, there, there was a perception among a number of key stakeholders saying, Aflatoon, you need to be much more present in the international development uh, arena. Uh, we, you, do, you do a lot more than many other organizations, but we hear the other organizations, we don't hear you. There needs to be a more presence in thought leadership, and we don't see the brand Aflatoon enough uh, internationally. So these were three typical calls uh, which were coming out, very different types of comments from the network. Based on all these, uh, these comments, we did a SWOT analysis, looking at the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities and the threats for Aflatoon as we come up with a new strategy. And on the strengths, there was one key point uh, which came again and again in is the core of Aflatoon was identified. Basically, Aflatoon lights children's fire through a unique triangle of fire starters. And let me take a minute to explain that a, uh, a little bit. First of all, the content uh, is, 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 is unique. Uh, on, on what it is teaching, but how it is teaching, uh, how the content is being developed. So uh, the, the feeling that these education resources of Aflatoon really provide the fuel uh, for the children. Uh, flexible, easy, contextualizable content, which can be used all over the world. Second part of, of, of the, this tri unique tri triangle is the active learning methodology, um, where it really ignites uh, the spark of these children to, to be empowered. So it's really a, a different way of teaching, a di different way of interacting with the children was identified the active learning methodology uh, as another key element of the unique approach of Aflatoon. And then thirdly, you could say the oxygen of, the, of, of Aflatoon is the global network, which grows on every day. And there are now more than 300 partners, governments, NGO partners, civil society partners, and other uh, international organizations who have joined the movement. And, and uh, together we are reaching millions of, of children. So this was really identified as the strength, the concept of social and financial education, the resources we are offering, the contextual adaptability, adaptability, the capacity building with the active learning methodology, the social franchise model, and the fact that it's scalable and sustainable. These are the positive items which came out of the consultation. However, there were also a number of weaknesses identified which we need to be open and transparent about. There is an issue of quality assurance in the sense that there are no consistent standards being used across the board. There was also a concern that more training was needed uh, to reach more teachers and more organizations. So invest uh, uh, much more in training uh, uh, approaches. Uh, the consistency and the lack of data from partners, there is a feeling that much more is happening than uh, we are altogether aware of. So a better data management of all the activities. 
the, uh, the low brand awareness, which I mentioned before. And then uh, it's still a lack of awareness among some of the key development stakeholders about the positive impact social financial education can make and contribute to the challenges I described in the beginning. There were also a number of opportunities identified. There is a COVID has uh, a positive spin up of COVID is that there is a growing uh, recognition by governments uh, that social and financial education should be integrated into uh, national education curricula. There are increased international, uh, multilateral, and bilateral organizations which see that systems change would require uh, financial education integrated as the systems are being changed. We see a growing request for technical assistance. And we see that digital education is really an opportunity we could build on. Um, ha having said that, there are also a number of threats. Uh, we are seeing education conservatism. There is a school of thought, uh, specifically in the education sector, who is saying children have lost so much out of the last two years because of COVID. We should only focus on math and literacy. Um, there is a growing digital divide between they have access to internet and have not access to internet. The lack of digital skills among teachers, the increased vulnerability for, of girls over the last few years, and a, a possible funding shift, perceived funding shift to health and other epidemiological responses because of COVID. So these have been basically the strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. One of the key questions we asked for all partners is, is our mission and is our vision still at par with what's, what's required out there? And basically 95% of all the respondents, uh, of all of you have said, yes, the mission is still very valid. Uh, it is important to continue uh, to ensure access to high quality, inclusive, child-centered social and financial education for all children and young people with a strong focus on the most vulnerable. And the vision was also reaffirmed that we need to really see that socially and economically empowered children and young people who can act as agents of change in their own lives for a more equitable, and sustainable world so, and with a strong focus on skill and sustainability. Now, what does that mean for us as a, uh, as a network, as, a, as, as partners with Aflatoon? What are the priorities in the coming months? And we have, ident uh, years. we have identified three strategic objectives with a number of initiatives. And the first strategic uh, objective is really continuously improve inclusive and responsive education resources. So the content, and the, uh, which is flexible to contextualize through different delivery models, the traditional in-person, digital, blended, and other approaches. So, and, and key activity initiatives under that, that that's priority are really upgrading our resources. So including green skills and digital skills, expand and in, uh, intensify training for the master trainer pool, Further work on quality standards and certification of trainers, as well as certification of teachers, and further strengthen our monitoring and evaluation system across the board. So these are the priorities under num uh, objective number one. Objective number two is really focusing on igniting and growing the global Aflatoon network. And, and that is, first of all, really prioritizing our work with children. So intensify the exchange and co-creation with children and youth at partner level, but also at international level. Further build the capacity of our partners in the area of fundraising, teacher training, uh, advocacy and communications. Uh, the ambition is to grow the network to more than 600 partners to work with 60 governments uh, at state or national level on uh, integrating it into the curricula and train uh, as a result of all these activities at least 250,000 teachers in the next five years. Ambit ambitious, but doable. And then the third priority in, in the whole uh, uh, global strategy is, is really be much more bold and drive bold thought leadership in a turbulent post COVID-19 world. So many things are changing. We're talking about systems change. We really need to engage at, uh, at the highest level within the communities, within the countries, within the regions and, and at global level to really push the agenda and, and making sure that children are being empowered uh, to take control of their lives and make a positive contribution. And uh, the, the key initiatives under this third uh, objective are really 
setting up, working with academic institutions to set up a 2030 research and learning agenda. What are the priorities of research? Set up an annual sort of state of the field report. So really coming up with knowledge, thought leadership in reports where we can highlight to our colleagues at national level and international level on what are the priorities and what are we seeing as lessons learned. Launch an international social financial education award and ceremony. So this would be a fun, but also important recognition of the work by all the partners on how they are doing. So this will be an award for all the Aflatoon partners and beyond. We will set up a future 21st century SFE think tank uh, with the partners in the network so that there is a much more engagement uh, between each other uh, together on, on the priorities and then be much more present internationally. So intensify advocacy and research communication at national events as well as international events by the partners and by uh, the secretariat. Basically, those are in broad strokes the priorities of, of, uh, of the next three years, five years. Um, we have identified three strategic enablers in order to uh, achieve these objectives. First of all, is to further build a world-class organization. Uh, and that's uh, at the level of the secretariat, the teams here working on the content, on the monitoring and evaluation, on the uh, partnership uh, development, fundraising, but also engaging much more closer on the, with the programs, with the partners on the ground. So we will be establishing regional hubs where there will be uh, full-time Aflatoon people working in the regions with the partners uh, engaging at, at all different levels. Secondly, we will further diversify the funding sources for financial sustainability. So, and one of the key priorities is really working on much more innovative ways with the private sector to see how we can work with them to fund finance and have programs for uh, children. And thirdly, really rolling out a globally endorsed branding to make sure that everybody uses the same branding uh, tools, that we are much more visibly out there and that we speak about Aflatoon and that people know that uh, these programs are good because it is Aflatoon. Um, that's it. We all work closely together. Um, I'm sure we're going to make it. The expected outcome from all these ambitions and these objectives is basically ultimately that over the next five years, by training over 250,000 teachers, the Aflatoon growth movement will grow to 600 plus partner organizations. And we will work with at least uh, in 60 countries with governments and multilateral agencies. And ultimately, as a result of that, we should be reaching 60 million children and youth in the coming five years. I once more want to thank everybody who is participating in this consultative process. And I'm really looking forward and I'm speaking on behalf of the entire team and the board to work with all of you to achieve this important uh, goal. Thank you so much. Lama, back to you. Thank you, Roland, and uh, thank you, everyone. So um, as promised, uh, we will start addressing some of the questions you shared already with us. So far, I don't have many questions. I have only three questions. Uh, so, Roland, I'm going to start with you. I have a question uh, that was addressed uh, to you. Uh, so, uh, we have uh, Hazel and Modino asking if, it's, if there's any possibility for Aflatoon to facilitate the child forum or youth conference on SFE, on social and financial education in person on a regional level. That's a very important point. Uh, Thank you for raising it. Um, I'm trying to get my screen back. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, first of all, what I should have mentioned, uh, today we are sharing with you at, at the global level, while we have translators from for all the different main languages, the, the key highlights of the strategy. But the next step in the coming weeks is that at regional level, we will organize similar meetings where the regional board members and the program managers will directly interact with you to go to in more detail through this entire strategy and discuss the implications for the regions and at country level. What we are foreseeing is that in 2020, as you know, every two years we have an international conference and we would see that as part of the new strategy, a much more active engagement of children and youth in, in those uh, conferences. We will have an international conference in 2023, but in 2022, this year, we hope to convene the partners at regional level face-to-face -face 
where if it's possible. But at the moment, looking at the trends with COVID and the international travel opening up, we are very uh, positive about the idea and, and are preparing for regional meetings uh, where indeed you can come together uh, to further push this agenda forward. Thank you, Roland. Um, I have another question. Uh, I'm going to ask my colleague Shirin Husseini, she's the head of programs at Aflatoon, uh, to, to answer the question. Um, so the question is, uh, what are some of the challenges uh, that we are facing uh, working uh, in a global network? Um, thank you. Thank you, Lama. And sorry if I have um, a little bit of a noise next to me, it's uh, not in my control. Um, okay, so working with a global network, um, like each region, we have like different challenges uh, related to like the specific context of each region. Um, uh, sometimes like we start working uh, on like certain initiatives, but then like social, economic, sometimes political situation in this region or in this specific country can influence um, how we manage the work in the network and how we can scale up or ministry in our programs. Um, when we consult with partners and like, you know, try to hear um, from the network, like the main challenges. So sometimes like fundraising or like, you know, um, having funds um, to cover the implementation of the Aflatoon social financial education programs in, in, in each region or like in the country can be like, uh, a main challenge, uh, but mainly sometimes like, you know, the resources, uh, capacity building programs, um, like exchange programs, networking. So we are trying as much as we can in the programs team with all the uh, program managers, regional program managers to uh, bridge the gaps and try to offer like the technical assistance uh, based on the needs of each region or like each country. But it's still like, you know, uh, these are among the most um, uh, challenges that like uh, we face. Uh, yeah, so I hope this answers the question. Thank you, Lama. Thank you, Shirin. I have another comment um, uh, from uh, Suryadi. So uh, I think Aflatoon need to con consider uh, international meeting for Aflatoon youth and children. Club members in Indonesia asking, ha have been asking for this for, 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 for many years ago. So Shirin, if possible, based on the work plan that we have developed for at least 2022 and beyond, can you please give them an idea about some of the initiatives we will be undertaking uh, focusing mainly on uh, children and youth and uh, the in-person uh, also meetings that will be taking place. Yes, thank you, Lama, and thanks for the question. Um, yeah, um, we have like um, the usual uh, activities that uh, our partners are used to, like the technical assistance, capacity building trainings um, during the year, but also this year and like as part of the new strategy, we are um, introducing the new initiatives. Um, we are going to establish uh, regional hubs in each region um, to support the work in the field and, um, you know, like coming with um, more like advocacy events, more initiatives uh, in each field. So this is something new. And um, also we are going to establish a youth forum uh, to more like um, include youth and adolescents in our work, working directly with this AG group and um, this youth forum uh, like on a global and regional level, we'll come up with a working plan for the next five years to do like a lot of initiatives and activities as well led by youth. Um, and also like the highlight of this year, we will have in-person, hopefully in-person uh, regional meeting for each region for partners to meet again and uh, exchange um, knowledge, experience, see how we are facing our challenges, how we are like, you know, uh, offering solutions for uh, our programs uh, related to social financial education. Um, uh, more like in, in new things like, yeah, um, we had this before and now like we are um, reactivating the idea of exchange of programs or like twinning between some partners on regional levels. Uh, so this is also something that we will be introducing. 
in addition to like um, more trainings, especially with Afra Youth, uh, the new program for all regions coming very soon, um, uh, training workshops for like the basic um, Aflatoon um, program for the new partners, and also um, other trainings that we identify and we will identify during the year based on the need of the partners in each region, what topics they want us to focus on, uh, how to use our supplements in a more efficient way. So these are like among our very busy and rich work plan for uh, 2022 and also for the next years. Thank okay. Thank you, Shireen. Um, we also have a question um, from Rahaf. Uh, so Rahaf is asking, uh, how, how did we identify the weaknesses in the, in the data? collected uh, from the partners? And what, it, what are our suggestions to address this weakness? Uh, and how can the partners um, support in that? Uh, I'm gonna be answering this question. So basically the weakness that we have identified was based on the feedback that we received from the partners during the consultation focus group discussions that we had last year. And based of course on the, on the experience of Aflatoon during the last couple of years. Uh, unfortunately, some partners do have the capacity to collect data, but many expressed uh, the need uh, to get support to analyze the data. This is for one. Uh, for two, we don't have a, um, a platform where we can collect the data and analyze it on a, in a timely manner. So uh, the only data we receive is basically based on feedback from partners on specific grants or projects that are ongoing or at the end of the year or uh, in the first quarter of the next year when we share the annual survey. Uh, how are we going to address this? So first of all, we are going to develop a, a robust m &E framework. We are going to develop the tools and we are going to develop the frequency of the data collection that should be happening. And of course, we will be supporting the partners uh, by building the proper platform and uh, building their capacities as well. Um, how can the partners help basically by, by being like cooperative and uh, using all the tools and the systems that we will be uh, developing as Aflatoon? I hope I, I answered your question. Um, uh, Roland, I have a question uh, for you. Um, so an, an anonymous attendee is asking, uh, can you kindly clarify how this strategy will promote the work of Aflatoon worldwide? Yes, um, the strategy is, is basically a roadmap. Um, and this is not a roadmap only for the people of Aflatoon who are working at the Secretariat in the, in the different teams, but it really is the roadmap for the entire partnership. This consultative process was so consultative because we really want to make sure that what we were identifying was the priority, not just for us, but was really the priorities for you and how we could service those priorities for you. So what will happen is that based on the discussions uh, we are having, the, the presentation of today, as I mentioned, we will have a follow-up regional workshops where we will further uh, go in detail of these plans and then set up in motion regional planning where you will be working at regional level uh, with the regional board members and the program managers on translating these global priorities into your regional strategy. And that's why it will also be the focus of these regional face-to-face -face workshops coming up latest mid-year, uh, hopefully, where we will really uh, work together on translating these ambitious targets into very practical activities on the ground, uh, how we can support you in further uh, training of the teachers, how we can support you uh, with rolling out the new content on climate change and digital skills, how we can support you with the digital uh, opportunities for education, how we can support you uh, with engaging the youth, how we can work together, learn from each other uh, in all these fields, because there's such a rich experience as we speak going on in the field by many of you partners, that it's really important for us to facilitate and share with each other on those opportunities. So there are different, different many ways of different ways of, of, of putting this in motion. And uh, ultimately that you feel on the ground as an organization in country X, that you can use this information to further strengthen your program. Thank you, Roland. Um, a question to uh, Maxwell. He's our digital and innovations manager at Aflatoon. So uh, the question is from Gertrude um, from Mozambique. 
so in Mozambique, they are facing challenges with the internet connection and technology like many other countries. So what are what plans does the Aflatoon Secretariat foresee to strengthen the countries? Thanks, Lama. Um, greetings to everyone. So over the years, Aflatoon has been working towards using different kinds of um, uh, implementation strategies. So we're looking at SMS delivery, we're looking at integrating with Facebook Messenger, also WhatsApp. But recently, one thing that I've been doing and it's working very well is that we have packaged these um, courses or um, different modules, and it can be uh, used on, let's say, laptops and also um, tablets without internet access. So basically, you just sort of download these onto your devices and, and, um, and unzip it, and basically, it runs through your browser. And that's uh, a few of the things that we're doing internally, but at the same time, we're trying to take it on a case by case basis. So in the case of Malawi, for example, we want to hear from your side what the challenges are internally, and then think of how we can sort of build this around the opportunities that exist on the ground. But as it stands now, we're exploring also TV and radio happening within different countries. Like I said, WhatsApp, Telegram, um, what, um, um, Facebook Messenger, and of course, um, ready to use on platforms that already exist in these countries. Thank you, Maxwell. Uh, the next two questions will be for Nivedita. She's our education uh, manager. Uh, so Nivedita, the first question is, how do we involve caregivers of Aflatoon children to raise their awareness about uh, social and financial and enterprise skills developed for their children? Uh, if, this is if this, if enhanced, will make them help children practice these skills at home as well? So if you can answer this, this one. And uh, another question is related to uh, whether or not we have a program for children with disabilities. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lama. So regarding the first question of involving caregivers and parents, this is an area that we also recognize and we want to prioritize it in the coming years as well. Um, as you know, our Aflatot program has a family toolkit and it basically has a set of activities that can be conducted along with parents to bring them uh, along with the children in the classroom to learn about financial literacy as well as the life skills programming. But uh, as part of our new strategy, we will also prioritize um, having curricula as well as learning activities to involve parents and caregivers in the social financial education program. Um, regarding the second question about children with disabilities, at the moment, uh, we are in the process of revising our core curricula of Aflatoon core curricula this year. And we will be looking at making our uh, all of our products, the curricula as well as the digital products, more disability inclusive. But at the moment, we don't uh, have content or curricula for children with disabilities. Also the broad spectrum of disabilities that we work with, but we're uh, looking to make it more disability inclusive. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially for, uh, especially in our digital learning uh, aspect as well, uh, as we're able to cater to different types of disabilities there, but we don't have uh, content from the Platoon International for disability responsiveness at the moment. But I think uh, this is also an area that we can focus on along with our partners, because we're sure that our partners have implemented our curricula in different models across the world. Okay. Thank you, Nivedita. Um, another question uh, for Maxwell. Um, so uh, from Irvine, what progress has been made towards digital content, especially for Aflatin Plus program? And is it available for all partners? And is it part of the strategy going forward? Thanks, Lama. Uh, progress, massive, massive progress. Um, I'm going to try and speak to it without maybe sounding a bit exaggerating, but um, we all are aware of um, what COVID caused. And in our flat, we, over the years, we have been looking at game-based learning. We have been looking at creating content, targeting the learners directly. At the same time, we're thinking of all the different challenges and again, all the different platforms that exist in the different countries and how we could create something that benefits everyone, regardless of whether you were, you know, which platform you were used to working on. And we have games, of course, um, that include Aflatoon content on employability at the same time, also on financial education. One thing we're also looking at is um, the game also sort of builds financial attitudes. We did a presentation on it, I think, um, some, some few months back, and we're happy to sort of go into it in the regional meetings as an option. One thing that we're also doing is that we have created these very short um, uh, modules 
that target teenagers and young adults based on Affleton curricula, and of course also based on the Affleton Plus um, as well. And these are available to be, to be deployed um, through, through the network. And it's going to be partly, partly um, given to all Affleton paid partners. Majority of it will probably be for free. I think we're still trying to look at it internally, but um, as far as content targeting teenagers and young adults are concerned, we do have over 30 available to use. And one thing we're doing internally is working towards expanding the topic to cover um, green, um, green skills as well as digital skills this, at the same time. And of course, have games that are also linked to that. Another thing that we're trying to do is that, again, I mentioned the different platforms available. All these content we're creating can sit on any platform. So Affleton content is compatible with more than 90% of all platforms within, you know, that you are using. We're happy again to, to um, at, uh, sort of address on a case by case basis where we sit with you and look at the platform you have and of course help you adopt the content, adopt the content for the platform for your own delivery. And as far as teachers and, and, and um, parents and all the, other stakeholders are concerned. We do have the Affleton Partner Platform where trainings happen, where there's engagement happening, where different resources are being shared. And I, I'm happy to also say that we are exploring other avenues as far as learning, of course, and as far as modalities are concerned. So we're looking at um, virtual reality um, as an option going into that. Recently, we created that we have a partnership with one very innovative outlet that's gonna help us convert Affleton content you know, uh, for use as, as, a, as, a, as an augmented reality option. And of course, we hope that this will give the beneficiaries more practical insights of how some of these courses can be, can be deployed. And, and many things are happening and not sort of go on and on and on because I could do that all day, but just sort of, we are creating content and we also want to hear from you what content is missing that you'd want us to um, create so that at least it benefits you and your um, and the, and the children and young adults, of course, going forward. Okay, thank you, Maxwell. Uh, before we answer the next question, uh, we are receiving some of your questions in the comment section. Please, would it be possible to write them in the Q and A section so we make sure not to miss anyone, uh, anyone or any question? Um, the next, the next question is for uh, Nivedita again. Uh, this is a question from Fatu from Gambia. Uh, Fatou is asking if there is any opportunity for curriculum development in new uh, areas that were identified during the survey, like uh, the inclusion of life skills and reproductive health. Um, Navi, maybe you can give them an idea about some of the new topics we will be um, uh, working on um, in the next couple of years. Yeah, thank you for the question, Fatou. Um, so like, you know, like Roland explained also, our five core elements do cover the life skills right now. The first two pillars are personal understanding and self-exploration, and that is uh, more related to social emotional learning. And we have the rights and responsibilities, which are related to uh, participatory approaches as well. And so the life skills part is uh, an ongoing stream in all of our curricula, as well as reproductive health is focused more in the upper teen age group and the upper teen plus curricula specifically. Uh, but like Rulan explained, we are in the process in, over the next five years of also revising, uh, reviewing and revising our Aflatoon, Aflateen, Aflayuth and Aflatot curricula. So we can expect that um, the revision will also improve the offering that we have right now. But apart from that, like Lama just explained, we will be creating new curricula on uh, the, specifically on the thematics of um, digital finance supplement, which will be uh, launched uh, in the beginning of this year, this month, actually. Uh, apart from that, we'll also have green skills, sustainability as one focus area and digital skills, which will also be ready for our partners by the middle of this year. Okay, thank you, Nivedita. Uh, the next question is from Abdul Salim. Uh, so I'm going to be answering your first question and I will be giving the next one to Rebuland. So how do you support the partners to address the weakness in data collection? This is something uh, I, I answered previously. So basically by developing the tools and by building the capacity of partners and uh, developing the proper platform where they can actually report um, on the data. Roland, uh, the next question is for you. What plans do you have to work uh, with partners to promote your brand and visibility? 
Um, this is a very important question. Um, brand and visibility. We are at the moment uh, developing and uh, we have uh, brought in an international uh, consultant to help us with uh, setting up a, a new branding approach. But uh, practically what it will be meaning is that we will have a sort of rebranding of, of Aflatoon, but very much you will recognize yourself in, in that branding. We want to have a bit more of consistency so that we all use the same uh, type of brand. Uh, you will still have the freedom to very much or very little use Aflatoon, but there will be an, a request to all partners to acknowledge Aflatoon in a way that it's visible. Uh, and then ultimately, uh, we will uh, more actively be uh, engaging in, in the different media, the social media, but also in, in writing blogs. Uh, and we will do that here from, from Amsterdam, but we will also see where we can work with partners uh, on, on how to get the, the story out there. It's so important because every day as we speak, there are miracles happening because of the Aflatoon Partner Network. What you are doing in, in, in all these different countries at, on a daily basis is incredible. And, and uh, that story needs to be tell, told. And that story cannot only be told by me or by Lama or the, uh, or the people in the programs here in Amsterdam. We together have to tell that. And we will try to develop a platform where you can tell your stories, but we can also reach out much more strategically the international uh, players, but also the people in your communities, in your countries, to hear about the great work you're doing. Because it's not only inspiring, it's really important that people learn from your work. Thank you, Roland. Um, the next question is from Ibrahima. Uh, so, Ibrahima, your question is related to the in-person training. Uh, definitely. I mean, for us as a Flatoon, we always plan and budgetize for in-person trainings. But sometimes when it's not possible to travel to a specific country, we do conduct the training online. But for 2022 and beyond, we are hoping to have more and more in-person trainings as well. Um, uh, the next question would be uh, for Shireen. So Shirin, I have two questions for you. The first one is from Amadou. Uh, Amadou would like to uh, understand a little bit more the implications of the new partners uh, who joined the network, but who are still not fully engaged uh, yet. So what are our plans for these partners? Uh, yes, um, so for new partners, yeah, it has been very challenging, especially the last two years for the partners who joined during um, the pandemic and we couldn't like, you know, do a capacity building in, in person. Also like, you know, um, they couldn't like reach schools and um, start the implementation. So that's why like we're trying to, um, to add more steps to the support to the new partners. Uh, this year, um, things are moving more forward and, um, like, as you mentioned, Lama, uh, the online trainings are trying to solve uh, part of this problem. Um, just like, you know, to, to provide partners with the quarterly um, uh, trainings for like, you know, the, the first level of Aflatoon or like, you know, how to start orientation meetings. So we're starting doing this um, for some regions already. It happened in December, other regions it's happening now um, up to March. Uh, end of March. So um, this was like, you know, the main thing um, about like, you know, supporting the partners, giving more time. Uh, it's important that you have to give sufficient time to the new partners. We know that it's not always possible in lugares y áreas donde no hay conectividad. Sin embargo, hemos tenido muy buenas experiencias en Libia, en donde hicimos like um, uncertain times, but hopefully we were going back to, to the field uh, very soon uh, to provide all the, um, the required trainings. Thank you, Shireen. Another question specifically for Malawi. Uh, so Alfred is asking if it's possible to introduce uh, Aflatoon in the primary and secondary uh, sections instead of uh, only implementing it in clubs. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it depends on like where we're implementing the context. If we have efforts like working um, with national integration with governments, with Ministry of Education or not. 
Um, so we are trying our, our best now with all the regions to map um, our efforts in all countries, especially when it comes to working with formal education or with the schools, with the ministers of education and see like what is the best way um, if we should go like more with primary education and like integrate our um, curriculum or our program in um, inside like, you know, the school day, uh, the curriculum, or it's better like just to keep it extracurricular or uh, in the clubs. So it depends on the specific case um, I think um, we can follow up for like the case of Malawi exactly uh, with our uh, program manager and see exactly how we can like move from uh, clubs to primary school but this is what we are aiming for because it's better for us like you know to integrate the program in the official uh, education system because this will like reach to all students and it will be like more um, within the educational system and uh, we can guarantee that more and more uh, children and students will benefit from the program so we agree with this point but we're like trying to see how to do this in as many countries as we can okay uh, Shadin, another question related to national integration in case uh, in some countries the governments like take too much time uh, to do the national integration, what is a Flatoon uh, plan or strategy to facilitate and accelerate the process? Yeah, this is also one of the initiatives um, in the new strategy, like how to build consortiums or like advisory committees for uh, financial inclusion, financial education um, in different countries and bringing like other stakeholders or key players in the field. So um, this will help a lot like with, um, you know, when you build a consortium of different partners from different like backgrounds, private sector, central bank sometimes, ministries, not, not only Ministry of Education. So now we are like moving to um, or not moving like adding uh, the work uh, with um, ministers of youth or so, uh, ministers of social affairs and other ministries or like governmental bodies that can push forward the agenda of national uh, 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 national integration, sorry, and um, integrating the social financial education um, within like, you know, mainstreaming it and um, reaching to more children and youth. So um, this is like mainly the approach to include more key players, more partners, uh, building consortiums, uh, building like advisory committees on national, um, regional levels. So this can help a lot with, um, you know, moving forward and pushing the agenda and like um, facilitating the work. Thank you, Shirin. Uh, next question is from Maria Tu. Uh, this question is for you, Nivedita. Uh, she's specifically asking about uh, children who are on the move and who are displaced due to, due to conflict, conflict and who do not have access to, uh, to the traditional uh, school system. So does the strategy take into consideration those children? Yeah, thank you for the question. At the moment, we have our uh, up to tone curricula for non-formal education, as well as the life skills and uh, financial education for peace curricula. These are the ones that might be somewhat relevant to the demographic that you're mentioning. But if this is a need uh, from our partner network, uh, we'll definitely consider this also as part of the uh, the revision that we're uh, doing for the core curricula. So we'll, it'll be good to connect after also to see if this is a need from the partner network in a certain region and uh, to see what we can level up. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Maxwell, uh, this next question is for you with the, uh, from uh, Muya. Uh, with the techni techno technological divide that exists in many countries in Africa, what plans are there to ensure there is meaningful youth participation in the areas of reproductive health and life skills, especially uh, where you are considering communication channels such as television, etc. Um, we actually have um, a plan ready, and we're happy to to put it in motion at least with the, with um, Malawi um, after maybe in the next couple of um, months when when we can sort of agree on timelines and everything else. The way we want to approach it is probably even look at radio first. So we we sort of have these target um, learners in groups and assign them coaches or mentors. And then as these programs are running, they are together either listening to the program or watching the program. And that is where you sort of build the communication and engagement in person, also with parents involved. And that is one way for us to sort of test or assess if learning or if engagement is taking place. And of course, at the same time, with these radios and TVs, we're able to check uh, when the program is going on, how many people are tuned in. But we have it ready. We want to sort of implement it with your support, of course. And that uh, we want to identify a team that is ready and we can do this. We do have a plan in place and we're happy to implement as soon as possible. Okay, 
Thank you, Maxwell. Uh, Roland, uh, this next question is for you from uh, Krista. Um, I just want to ask how and what will be the best strategy to encourage the youth to be financially literate, especially now that we are experiencing the pandemic? Using the Aflatoon methodology, that's uh, basically in short the question. I think we, we have learned so much in recent years on, on how to engage with, uh, with the young people, uh, even under the very difficult circumstances where we would not have direct access with them in the classroom. Um, so we have a, a large number of best practices uh, from the different regions. And uh, one of the challenges for us now is to better share, and that's one of the priorities in the strategy, to share these experiences among the network with each other uh, to learn from each other. But we feel that we have proven approaches that work and uh, which can be replicable in, in other settings. So it's, it's the, the next step is uh, if there is a need for additional support in, in this question on, on reaching the youth with financial literacy is, is talk to the program managers and talk with your partners in the network and, and we, will, uh, we will work with you and help you. Thank you, Roland. Uh, the next question is, uh, is for Shirin. Uh, in the global strategy, did you consider how to react towards uh, in case of future risks similar to COVID? Mm -hmm. um, thanks for the question. Actually, yes, uh, when COVID started, it was a surprise for us and we had like to act um, quickly to find a way to, um, to connect with our partners, to provide all the technical assistance, all the support we are supposed to. Um, as all the organizations and all the networks at the beginning, it was like, you know, a tough time trying to figure out like for how long if we need to invest in that. But I think after two years, um, we started like a lot of um, um, effort uh, especially with like the digital, the online training, um, all the um, and the events that we are like doing online, um, like you know to keep going even if we cannot like uh, reach uh, to the field and go uh, visit the countries and the regions. Um, so maybe like you noticed that like we uh, hosted um, webinars, regional meetings, and uh, trainings online. Even as I mentioned before, in like um, some marginalized um, and um, difficult situations. Uh, so in the new strategy, we were like, trying to do this balance and um, try to, to go to normal because yes, for sure, we need to connect with our partners in person, but also to keep um, some events and some um, activities to be online and um, with um, minimum connectivity or like, you know, how to act whenever it's not a very stable situation. Not only for COVID, we found out that um, these methods are helping reaching out to some countries that we were not able to involve um, uh, partners or trainer, uh, trainers before because of like a lot of um, reasons. But um, now like, you know, enforcing and focusing on our online services and how we connect with our partners can be like a little bit more helpful. Uh, but we all the time wish like to do it the um, normal way to, to do the interaction in the best way uh, in person. But yes, it's, it's part of the strategy to keep like the balance between two. Thank you, Shireen. Uh, another quick question for you. Uh, if we have any uh, master regional master trainers in the Asia region. Yes, end of March, we have one for uh, Afla Youth. <laughs> I was discussing with Lucky, the senior um, regional manager for Asia this morning, and um, we are planning for all the regions, but um, for Asia in specific, because you asked, we will have one for Afla Youth. Um, we did one for like the general Afla Toon uh, back in December, and we will have like a um, lot more um, capacity building workshops coming soon. Okay, thank you, Shirin. Uh, two, two questions for Nivedita. Uh, so in case we have a training of teachers this year, can the new issues identified during the survey be included in the training package? Okay, um, it's a really good question. And I want to confirm that we are listening to the feedback that you've given also from the strategy discussions and uh, through other means. And we are hoping to improve the training as we go along this year, but also as part of the revision of our curricula, the training manuals will also get an update this year but keep the feedback coming in with each training that we provide. So we're also able to learn a lot with you. Okay, thank you. And uh, the next question, which is also very important, uh, how we are approaching environmental issues through the curriculum? Right, um, so our, our Flatoon curricula, our core curricula, um, touches upon the environmental issues because they're looking at, let's talk about saving. We're looking at saving as a transferable skill and not just in terms of saving money. And I also see a question in the chat related to this, we're looking at saving resources to start off with. 
And that's one aspect in which the environmental issues are integrated within the Aptitone curricula, but we also have the environment supplement, uh, which is which can be used in supplement to the Aptitone curricula. Um, but this year we'll also be improving and developing more on sustainability and green skills. Okay. Thank you, Nivedita. Um, unfortunately, we're running out of time. Uh, I can see there are still a couple of comments uh, from some of the partners. We're going to schedule another um, session per region where I hopefully think that you, we will be able to address those questions uh, during those meetings, th those separate meetings. So um, I would like to thank everyone again for joining, for, for your interaction as well, for sharing your questions. I hope we were able to address most of them at least. Uh, but we, are, we will always remain available uh, to answer additional questions, if necessary, through our uh, program managers. Um, thank you again for your support, and we are looking forward uh, for the implementation of this new strategy. And thank you also for the whole team who prepared and organized uh, this launching event. Bulund? Yeah, uh, Lama, thank you. A few last words from me, if I may take the liberty. It's I realize, of course, that presenting a global strategy could be quite abstract from the level, what does that practically mean for me at country level, at project level, but a few key takeaways I'd like you to take away. First of all, is that what you will see is that there will be a number of new tools developed when we talk about um, climate change, digital finance uh, services, as well as digital skills. Secondly, we will continue to focus and expand on different delivery models, the face-to-face, -face, the digital, and the blended learning. And with there, in that process, we will also enrich our active learning methodologies, which we are, are, are doing. So that's the second. Thirdly, we will really hammer on the quality and teacher certification, trainers, training certification will be a priority in the coming years uh, to come. And we will set up a system so that that can be automated. Fourthly, is youth participation co-creating with youth, you have all asked for that and will be a priority. And we will work with you to engage with the young people. And then fifthly, is building the, the capacity of you partners in the network on, uh, on, on fundraising, on uh, training, et cetera, as I mentioned before. So really sharing and building the capacity amongst each other. And then the last point is the visibility, telling the story out there, uh, uh, having a, a solid brand, so that we really together can enrich the movement to have more visibility in the international arena. We can only do this if we do it together. So that's the last call from my side. I'm really looking forward to the regional meetings, how we can further have the dialogue to roll this abstract plan into really tangible results for children. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice day or afternoon or evening. <laughs> Thank you.